I'm guessing it's been a while since you last listened to this one. High School, Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne playing for you right here on 88.2 Sanyu FM. It is the hit selector. I am Crystal and joining me right now, I'd like to welcome Amanda and Gabriano to Celeb Select. How are you doing, my dear? I'm fine, Crystal. How are you and your bicycle? We're doing fine, always. <laughs> my bicycle and I. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if for some reason you were in the center of town and you saw a lady on a bicycle, just know that she was coming to the Sanyo Film Studios because you rode here. Yes, I did. Where did you ride from? I rode from Nakasero. From Nakasero. Yes. And so this is not a motorbike. Let me just make this clear. Sometimes it's a when you bicycle. A yeah. bicycle. A yeah. bicycle. So, Amanda, yes, you Christ. love to cycle. You love your bicycle. I do. Oh my goodness, where to even begin with that? Do you do you ride your bicycle every day? Almost every day. Almost every day? Yes. Are you serious? I have special distances, um, mm -hmm. special areas, special routes. Mm -hmm. I love to be in touch with nature, so I, I really can miss my bicycle. Oh. So <laughs> I don't like to move without it. Even when I drive, I want to have it in the boot. Then in if the boot I want to, car. yes. If I want to ride, I park the car and get on the bike. Okay. Then I feel so free. On the bike compared to when I'm in the car. You know, because yeah. you're cooked up in that small space. Yeah, like here, this junction, uh, uh, the city square junction, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. But once you go through it, you put your brain to work and it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, I cannot explain it. Okay. So I just like it. Immediately I parked, I said, wow, okay, I made it. All so right. that's the bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's the love for the bike right yeah. here. First time we've ever had a bicycle in our <laughs> studio, I have to say. And I guess some people are listening right now and they're like, oh my goodness. Who is this lady? What does she do? So let's start there. I'm a lecturer of urban planning. I'm an urban planner by training. Mm -hmm. First trained as a teacher, worked as a journalist, and trained again as an urban planner. Mm -hmm. So I lecture students of urban planning. I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I really love matters to do with space, organizing space. When I look at the city, I think I have to remove this building and throw it away. <laughs> I have to put this road here. I wish I could... You know, that's what I do. That's my passion. Mm -hmm. I also do stakeholder involvement and engagement, mm -hmm. helping people, especially uh, policymakers, mm -hmm. uh, the public, to understand urban planning and like it. Order, space. Without order, we, we are going nowhere. And that's something that's sadly, sadly yeah. missing when you so look at Kampala City. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. In Kampala, any direction. Look that way, you'll see there's a problem. Look this way, okay, there's a wall. <laughs> this is not a problem. <laughs> but urban planning and then the bicycle comes in then mm -hmm. i feel i'm i'm more than a teacher more than a lecturer more than you know i'm a person who wants to be in touch with my space and organized space okay and i'm married i have two children a daughter and a son mm -hmm. my daughter is 17 my son is 11 oh okay i feel so happy <laughs> to be a mommy you know when they call you mommy mommy and then my daughter now is taller than me i feel <laughs> so nice about it but also she laughs at me and said mom you now have to wear your high heeled shoes because you see i'm really taller than you uh -huh. so i am feeling very uh, proud of myself mm -hmm. as a trained uh, professional mm -hmm. passionate cyclist uh, urban planner a mm -hmm. mother a wife okay i feel good all right yeah well, i'm happy to have you here today i think we always on this show we always go right back to where it started which yeah. is to know where you were born yeah mm -hmm. where i was born, born here in uganda i was mm -hmm. born in the western part in okay. kasese district mm -hmm. i was born in a family of 12 my mother gave birth to 12 children i'm wow. the sixth child how and was the that second daughter yes she said she tells us that she Every time she gave birth to the, the other child, she would say, oh, my God, look at this one. I have to get another one. <laughs> Maybe the other one will be better than this one. Oh, my God, this one. Now I need another girl. Now mm -hmm. I need another boy. So she kept doing it that way until when we were 12. 12. And uh, I think if the, the doctor hadn't stopped her, she would have got more. But at the 12th child, the doctor said, no, you must stop. No more. So I was raised in that uh, home of sharing beds. Two, okay, one head has to, fare that, to face that way, another head the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kick me during the night. Okay, tomorrow it will be your turn. <laughs> Annoy me during the day. I'll hit your head during the night. That's how I was raised. 
and it was all a hassle even meals you know sitting mm -hmm. around the, the plate and mm -hmm. my mother used to work really hard mm -hmm. my dad was a bus driver okay he worked really hard but we were many mm -hmm. and they wanted to give us the best we all went to school so they really hustled wow. but we were raised as um, healthy mm -hmm. children I think we are very social, all mm -hmm. of us, because we were quite many. We had to fight you our to way out. To live Maybe together. that's why I know how to fight in the traffic <laughs> for my space. <laughs> on your bicycle. <laughs> on my bicycle. <laughs> so that's why I was raised and very restrict, uh, restrictive uh, uh, family. Mm -hmm. Very strict. My mom was very, very strict. Oh. If she ever caught anyone of us standing with a boy or a man, that man was in trouble. <laughs> The whole village would get to know and then she would embarrass and then it stops. Right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. At school, she would check your bags. What have you taken to school? Mm -hmm. I think we had the best parents. Oh. Too hard, too strict, but we now can understand why they did why that. Why they did Yeah, it. and then the, she would say, no, that dress is not going to school. So we grew up yearning for nice dresses, nice dresses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sleepovers. She never allowed us to go for sleepovers. My God, asking her for a sleepover would earn one a punishment. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. Because you're not allowed. What are you going to do at a neighbor's home? What's mm -hmm. wrong with your home? What, what, do you, what can you do there what that you can't do, do here? <laughs> but I was quite stubborn and I remember doing so much. I really played. Mm -hmm. I played enough. Mm -hmm. I danced on the streets from school to <laughs> home. <laughs> I would swing my dress. I would laugh. The school was not far from home. I would laugh at break time and she would hear at home. And then she would say, I heard you laugh so loud. Mm. Stop laughing that loud. <laughs> it's not good for a girl. <laughs> so I was very naughty. I would go swimming in a river. There's a river called the River Mubuku. I think you have heard mm -hmm, about it. Yes, yes. I would go swimming there. In fact, there's a time the water was really a lot and I failed to swim. Came with a lot of force and really carried me maybe oh for a kilometer. No. Yes. That's a very so, scary but my experience. classmate, very scary. My classmate followed me, no, really followed me. I remember I, I just saw myself going to die and then followed me and lifted me out. Unfortunately, I don't know where that guy is. I cannot trace him. Mm. But he saved me out. I climbed trees. I earned myself a lot of canes. Yeah, but I Mango I trees. trees too. Oh, my God. Oh, Mango trees. Mm -hmm. Even I went on top of our roof. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I jumped off. Oh my yeah. With the sheet thinking it was a parachute. Exactly. The worst <laughs> bit was that of uh, the roof uh -huh. because it was so risky. Mm. But then also pouring water on the floor mm -hmm. so that we could slide and <laughs> go like the whole corridor woo, up to the end. <laughs> now I understand so why you did so much. And then the other things that I tried to learn how to ride a bicycle and I was stopped. Oh, because you were a girl. Yeah, because I was a girl. So mm -hmm. you cannot do this. But mm -hmm. I used to sneak a bit. But the bicycle, I did not succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So that means you only started riding later in life. Yeah, I started riding at past 30, to be precise. Wow. When I went to the Netherlands to study, mm -hmm. life was so hard. I had to walk a uh, longer distance to campus. My colleagues would get to campus earlier than me. Mm -hmm. Even if I took the bus, I had to do the distance from the station to the campus. Okay. So I, well, I was always late. Uh -huh. And I spent so much money because the bus, I would pay three euro 20 cents. And that's about about 11,000. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. Yes, yes. So I said, God, these bikes, I would stare at them in the morning and say, oh my God, I think I have to buy a bike. <laughs> I can't stand this. Then how am I going to ride and keep right? Mm -hmm. How can I learn how to ride so fast and learn how to keep right so fast mm -hmm. on the road? So it was I a bought a bike. And you decided I to just... got a Tanzanian friend. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to ride. Mm -hmm. Within two weeks, I... Uh, I, sh I didn't sleep. I said, <laughs> my God, I have to wake up so early and jump on that bike. And learn how to kids ride. Kids are it. going to laugh at me because in Holland, even kids ride. <laughs> old women ride. Old men, you know. <laughs> so I was so nervous. I almost didn't sleep. But the first day went well. I survived a bus accident. Because mm -hmm. their roads can be narrow, but mm -hmm. still there's space for a lane, for okay. a bicycle. Yes, yes, yes. So you have to squeeze. And that's how I got to learn. Because my mom wasn't there, that's one. Two, I was already married. <laughs> <laughs> and Three, girl. I was away. So, and yeah. 
so I could ride okay. in a country that has the infrastructure. For Nothing could stop me. Okay. Yeah. okay. We're going to come back to that. Right yeah. now, though, I'd like to ask you for your first request. So we know the kind of music you like. Wow. You know, I like a lot of music. Some songs, I don't know their titles, but <laughs> I like this song, mm -hmm. uh, Amanda. <coughs> I love it. Any song. surprise why Amanda likes a song called Amanda? <laughs> we have <laughs> special memories with my husband on that song. Ah, okay. I, I hope Don he's Williams. listening. Mm. <laughs> Amanda! <laughs> Don Williams, here it is. Amanda, light of my life. Fate. Oh, yes, indeed. It is the hit selector on 88.2 San FM. And I am chatting with Amanda right now on a Celeb Select. She's told us about her love for bicycles, even though she only started riding uh, in her 30s. And then you mentioned going to university in Holland. How did you end up going to Holland and uh, maybe not going to Macquarie? I was uh, teaching at Macquarie University already. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do my master's in urban and regional planning. And I applied for it uh, mm -hmm. in the Netherlands because I think, yes, they still train better mm. than we do at uh, postgraduate level. Okay. Well, so where I, do we go wrong in that? Oh, um, well, I think it's a stage. There are many reasons. First, mm -hmm. it may have to do with the online resources mm -hmm. because there I will really access everything I want. Okay. Then it also has to do with the motivation. We have to really accept that we are not as motivated as we should be. Okay. And uh, when one is already working and has a family, it's very difficult to study here mm. and concentrate and finish on time, and, mm. you know, excel. So I decided to, I would have actually gone to uh, the UK, mm -hmm. but I, I chose to go to the Netherlands. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that maybe that's more reliable, mm. that's more friendly mm -hmm. so i got a scholarship from the dutch government mm -hmm. and went to study in the netherlands for one year okay then i also worked there while studying and uh, mm -hmm. i'm a little bit dutch <laughs> a I little bit a dutch little now bit dutch okay i love eating cheese from there <laughs> i'm a bit dutch <laughs> So you, you can left us my, to begin. Look, look, my orange. <laughs> that's that's Holland. <laughs> so tell me, because um, you said you trained as a teacher first. Yeah. So what? How did you decide to change? Well, I trained as a teacher for Kiswahili language. Mm. Okay. I actually went to UTV, uh, let Bale Francis and let Toya Klama, those in the media must remember them, I guess. Mm -hmm. They gave me a job mm -hmm. to do news reading and I chose to do news reading rather than go uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. But then I also thought, no, TV is going to really be so routine. I will not be able to study further. I'm, I'm really not so much in that. I, I'm interested in the urban space. Okay. So I switched and, and went into urban and regional planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I... From teaching to journalism to urban and regional planning, but you can see when urban and regional planning, I'm a teacher. Yeah, I'm a teacher everywhere, <laughs> even in restaurants. Um, mm -hmm. The waiters, waitresses, when they do something wrong, I will call them until I asked, for example, uh, last week I asked for fresh chili, mm -hmm. and the lady came and said, No, we don't have fresh chili. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Tabasco sauce and something else. And she forced me to have it. Mm. Then I, I called another one and said, do you have fresh chilies? She said, yeah, of course. What? So she brought me the fresh chilies. And when I was done with everything, I, before I left, I called the other lady. and said, isn't this fresh chili? <laughs> why, why did you tell me it's not there? I said, oh, I didn't know. I said, uh -huh, next time you have to go ask, confirm, then mm -hmm. come give me feedback. She said, I'm sorry. So I go teaching everywhere. Mm -hmm, everywhere so I think, ev I think teaching is a lovely profession. It's unfortunate that we are underpaid in this country. Mm. But everybody should actually train to be a teacher. Mm. Then you will be considerate. You'll, be, you'll take care of everybody. You'll share knowledge. you like people. you try to bridge the gaps, you know. Mm. Teachers are Teachers very important. Teachers are really underappreciated. Yeah. Mm. But I feel that um, naturally... A teacher. You're naturally a teacher. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't escape it mm. anyway. So even if I'm now doing urban planning, I'm still teaching. And it's also addictive because you you, d you build your own audience. Mm -hmm. So you have students graduating every year, leaving yeah. you 
and you, you feel so attached to them. You I've don't always wondered about that because, you know, you, you have all your awards pretty much. And then when they move on, I've always wondered if teachers always feel a little bit of like, oh. You feel a gap. Yes. You, you when do. they leave you, you just feel, oh, they have gone. Then when you meet later, you're at the same level. That's why teachers, modern teachers should not widen the gap between them and the students. Mm -hmm. Because at a certain level, there is nothing as a gap. Okay. You are just at the same level. In fact, you need their help mm. at a certain level. Okay. Like I have uh, this query. Can you clarify this from uh, maybe you are a from uh, Bank of Uganda? You know, they really go in places that you need them. Mm -hmm. So I, I find it backward that some teachers still intimidate and uh, mistreat students. Mm. A good teacher has to find that parental nice training teaching and imparting style okay without uh, widening the gap okay well you can be part of the show right now on instagram we are instagram live that's off my profile crystal a newman and i am chatting right now with amanda in gabirano uh she came with her bicycle i was asking you if people were staring at you because in general i mean ugandans we like to stare <laughs> yeah people stare you know and you know it has even a bell <laughs> People stare. Yeah, we Ugandans because I mean like you, you use it almost every day. So that means even when you're dressed for work, you're riding your bicycle. Yes, even at the university they stare. Mm -hmm. People pull out their phones to take pictures <laughs> when they see me. Mm -hmm. So I'm even getting more nervous at people staring at me than the bad infrastructure and the border borders. Mm -hmm. Then when the border border guys stop to joke with me, I'm scared. Maybe they're going to pull my bag or something. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, it's not comfortable because it's not so normal yet. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. It's very rare. It's actually, I mean, maybe in the outside of town, but let's say, for example, in town, say a woman on a bicycle yeah. riding, that's Mm. First, it's women on a bicycle. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. Then in Kampala, our traffic situation, it's abnormal to it's see actually, a woman I'll on a bicycle. I'll be honest, I'd say it, I think it's scary. Yeah, it's scary. Mm -hmm. But once you're on the road, once you do it more than once, it's scary even when you're driving in this city. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the only thing in the car, you, you know, okay, when they hit this something it will not be my leg <laughs> but on the bicycle you know it's your leg exposed it's your arm it's your head mm -hmm. but i see that all road users even pedestrians have to take care on the road mm -hmm. so it's not only about the bicycle being unsafe the city feels unsafe mm. generally yeah whether you're riding or walking or driving okay so it's um it's a it's about choice but and mastering now. the fear yeah, mm -hmm. that fear once you hit the road the first one week. But you must have been a good road user generally. Mm -hmm. Safe and uh, def uh, not um, offensive, but defensive. Mm -hmm. And then you try to take care of other road users. Mm -hmm. Watch, use your eyes to see. Then you'll have that signal to take a decision, maybe at a junction. So, But the, the need for infrastructure, Crystal, is mm. very necessary. Yeah, we need lanes, and those lanes should have like a real physical separation, like a raised curb mm -hmm. for the safety of riders. Yeah, but I see that we have a big opportunity in this city that people would be riding, let's say from Bugolobi to here to mm -hmm. the city center. Yeah, because it's not hilly, mm -hmm. nice route, useful lay from Mulago to Oasis Mall. Go have fun with your bike. <laughs> But, you know, th the lanes are not there. Mm. But th I think people have to just go on the streets. Okay. And, and love it because you really work out. Yes. It's, it's very, it's very, very good. healthy. Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. healthy. And personally, I like meeting people. I like even joking with people I don't know. I haven't met. <laughs> this puts but you in touch with everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You'll stop to greet an old man, an old woman, a child. Someone has um, got a problem on the road. You will easily bypass that person when you're driving, but with the bicycle, the bicycle you can you, easily you can stop. easily stop. Okay. So it's two wheels, two powerful wheels on the road. Really good for society. Oh, I love this. I love this. Okay, Amanda, <laughs> I'm now going to ask you for your next song. Oh, your my next, next song. Uh -huh. I prepared my list. I'm still here. I love Juliana, but that song speaks a lot about life. Um, about life. About life. I think everybody has had a bit of that. Mm -hmm. And they are still here. So I think it's really a nice song. Okay, here yeah. it is. I'm still here. I'll be all right. Yeah.
Celeb Select right now, and I'm chatting with Amanda in Gabirano. Um, she's passionate about cycling, that is riding a bicycle, and she's a lecturer too. Now, you mentioned that you are married. Yes, I am married. When did you get married? I got married um, 17 years ago mm -hmm. to a very nice man. Oh. <laughs> and yes. it was not easy because I was raised in a Muslim family, but okay. I loved a Catholic man. How did so you... from the Muslim uh, family, I went to a Protestant school, Kiges High School. Mm -hmm. And in that school, I loved going to church praising, worshipping God and mm -hmm. I, I loved the Protestant faith more. Okay. So I converted to that. Then when I went home, they didn't believe it. They said, huh? how? This is not possible. Then later on, they thought maybe things will get better, I'll go back. Mm -hmm. Then I, the worst or the best happened that I fell in love with a Catholic man. Mm -hmm. So that was really hard. It was difficult. Because you said your, your mom was really yes, strict. Yes, really strict. How did your family take it? They were so mad at me. They were mad at us. But I loved this man. And then to make it worse, there was a, a richer man, mm. older man, mm -hmm. who was my parents' favorite at that time. Ah, their choice for yeah, you. Yeah, so that really complicated it and it was a fight. Mm -hmm. It was really a fight. It was stressful, but we stuck together and we made it. Mm -hmm. And then everybody up to now, they just say, these guys were just in love. They were meant to be together. They were meant to be together. That's so beautiful. So when they meet us, when they see us, they just see the same couple they met mm -hmm. that time, the same couple they tried to fight. Mm. So it's really nice to be in love. Mm -hmm. Let nothing stand in your way. Okay. Because it's very rare. It's a gift to, to feel that you love and to feel that you are loved. Mm. So who, who would want to stop that? Mm -hmm. Because you may want to force your way and you go to another man or another woman because you want to please society, you want to please your parents, you want to please your peers but at the end of the day it's the two of you it's two hearts that are going to be one and make a family so my husband and i mm -hmm. really have those special memories there's when we start going through those talks and so <gasps> do you remember that time when they were oh my god oh they were saying <laughs> no you can't be together but then this old guy did not give up he, he went around bad mouthing and mm. i i told him you see you can marry me but I don't love you. Mm -hmm. So when I mentioned that, it was really, really poison, like <coughs> opening a can of worms. Ooh. So he felt so bad. He actually bought me a car. He bought me a red starlet, <laughs> came, packed it in the compound, and then gave me the key, and I gave him back the key. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want a car, but I don't love you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going. I and I have a boyfriend. I have a man. Mm -hmm. I want to get married to that man. Mm. So that is how I. I'm a woman who fights my way through. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to pretend. Mm. I don't know how to do it. So I decided to stick with this man, <laughs> so that if I'm tired of him on my own, I can leave him. Mm. Or if he's tired of me. I hope he will not <laughs> get tired. <laughs> <laughs> then I can. Oh, you've already done seventeen years. So <laughs> n I think we are going nowhere. Mm -hmm. I think we will go nowhere together. I hope because we we have children, we have to raise. Mm -hmm. We have memories we have to keep. Mm -hmm. We fight. We argue. We are both very argumentative. <laughs> we have um, <laughs> moments where we really really get crazy and then we say god what were we doing then he says oh that is normal that happens mm. so there's always that uh, difference that we have but it's nice to be in love a lot of people don't it's really nice. believe in like you know love anymore they give up yeah. on relationships very easy i mean wh what's the secret to being together for so long i think you must love each other for just who you are mm. because i think my husband that time was earning 170,000 shillings mm -hmm. and I wasn't earning. Mm -hmm. By the way, I tried to work at St. Lawrence schools, <laughs> <laughs> Kabaka's Lake, but mm -hmm. my payroll became an issue. So I moved. So I didn't have a job actually, but mm -hmm. my husband had a job. 
but can you imagine that money was enough for us even to give us time to go out on our motorcycle and <laughs> have fun so it it's just you must love that person mm. and not to put so much science in it don't try to be artificial to to buy someone's love don't give people money if they love you they will come to you a lot of don't men a lot of money. men do exactly that yeah. they they buy i wouldn't say love because like you cannot buy love but no. they buy someone's attention and yes. time and then they get upset when this woman has taken all this from me and yet she's refused to be with me so yeah you know and that man was rich the man that wanted to marry me mm-hmm. rich but i was going to be the second wife that was not an issue if i had loved him probably i would have been the second wife okay mm-hmm. and he promised to give me a storied house a young girl <laughs> you promise her uh, you give her a car <laughs> you promise her a storage house this woman will come for that property then uh, when she d- discovers her freedom she will leave you alone in pain and you start killing each other you mm. start getting hurt i think people have to feel what they are feeling and be honest to themselves mm. do not give up to pressure do not just follow what society is doing if someone is wedding and you are, you like the gown and everything that mean that you should also get married quickly to that cool guy <laughs> or that cool chick the, the following weekend mm. that's how my husband and i really have managed each to. other okay and we we are we are really trying to grow together i hope we can stay together thank you for sharing yeah. that mm. thank you okay i'm going to ask you now for your next song my next song woo that is kabuleng and i like that song <laughs> this pampa story and people bleaching turning pinker and all that i like it that it comes from a guy mm-hmm. baby cool okay yeah here it is <laughs> Um, you started riding your bicycle in your 30s. Yes. You were doing it when you were out of Uganda. And yeah. then you brought it back here. <laughs> yeah, I brought it. Her, her love for the bicycle here. And yeah. you've been sharing it with the world. You've been traveling the world. Uh, how did that even be- happen? I always mean my word. And I remember at the university where I, I, I was, mm-hmm. um, the Minister for Environment came there and asked for international students to represent their countries mm. and share honestly what they want to bring back to, home to, yeah to mm-hmm. their country and for me i gave a speech of five minutes and it was all about the bicycle mm-hmm. and i did my study on on bicycle transport in kampala my master thesis so i told the minister that this is it seems like it's dutch culture the bicycle is dutch because of the flat uh, landscape flat terrain mm-hmm. But I have seen bicycles before in Kampala, mm-hmm. in Uganda. But I didn't think that it's so normal that even people here who are so rich are riding. The prime minister rides. My, my boss that time for a big company was riding to work. Parking, okay. the, the basement was full of bicycles. <laughs> rich people earning 6,000 euro mm-hmm. per month. Mm-hmm. Then I said, my God, no, no, no. I'm taking this to Uganda first to help us to be fit, mm-hmm. to, to save our environment from the emissions. Most of our cars are very old. Mm-hmm. Three, to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. Mm-hmm. And then four, to enable us to be free, especially the women. Be free to move. Because normally when you have a family car, it's a man's car. Yes, yes. So movement uh, by women becomes uh, really difficult. So you can't have the freedom, even for a distance of seven kilometers, which you can do by bike. Mm-hmm. Then I... Went to KCC that time. Yes. I met some engineers. One of them is called Bonin Sambu. I don't know if he's listening. <laughs> he knows about my craze with the bicycles. <laughs> and I told him, Bonnie, this is possible. We can start with some routes. We mm-hmm. can do it. Let's have lanes. When they construct roads, we have lanes. Then around that time, UNEP came up with uh, funds for... UNEP is United Nations Environment Program. Mm-hmm. Funds for a policy for non-motorized transport, and that is walking and bicycle riding. Mm-hmm. So Uganda has a policy already that says for all new infrastructure, there should be bicycle lanes and walkways. Wow. Yeah, it's a policy which okay. is not known yet by the public. I don't, people so don't I'm riding on that policy, mm-hmm. and uh, with KCCA, they have a pilot project they're trying out to have lens mm-hmm. so that was part of my thesis also okay. and people are riding people are appreciating i have many friends now already who have bought bicycles then i was thinking about women in the rural areas like lira a woman with a child on the back with 
a basket of stuff going to the market I, and then i wonder what would be the case if she didn't have the bicycle so the bicycle is making life easier for her uh -huh. why wouldn't the government also make life much easier by providing safe infrastructure there you bridge the gap between mm -hmm. the rich and the poor and the uh, the poor can get richer as they save costs of travel mm -hmm. save uh, costs of medication as a result of good health this transportation is a yeah. very very big part of our uh, of uh, life yeah. everybody even the old person even the lame person mm -hmm. even the blind has mobility needs mm -hmm. so this bicycle is like walking but while pedaling mm -hmm. and you see that the biggest percentage of people walk some people walk even up to 10 kilometers a day 20 kilometers life would be much easier yeah. with a bicycle and would be so a lot i healthier. decided mm -hmm. to take on the mantle it's now six years of this mm -hmm. story and i want to leave um what i talk about what i preach so I w at my workplace everybody knows that i ride at home my garage has more bicycles one car <laughs> so everybody <laughs> <laughs> knows that i'm really a bicycle person and i love driving it. cars mm -hmm. i love driving car uh, cars is cool um this is cooler for shorter <laughs> distances. For shorter distances. Yes, so it's course. really nice. And it makes me feel free because I have chosen to change from the car today and I can now use the bicycle. So when you took up this campaign, I yeah. mean, they even did like a movie about you. Yeah, yeah, Psychologic. yeah. Psychologic. Yes, How did correct. But they, did they approach you? Well, Who? don't joke with um, <laughs> social media. Mm-hmm. And, and the internet generally, they found me online mm -hmm. and they said, we would like to interview you. I said, yeah, I'm in Uganda. I said, okay, we will come to Uganda. I said, what? From Sweden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that time uh, my husband was ill. Then later the election tension, mm -hmm. then they went back to Sweden, but they said, we have spoken to you, Amanda. We are coming back because we as women, we must drive this somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we want to help you to spread this message not only to uganda but to the rest of the world okay so this psychologic film is about the hustle of a bicycle rider in a busy city like ours mm -hmm. it's about the hope that kcca is going to do lanes for safety mm -hmm. so the other cities in the world can learn that look a city like kampala is trying to do it smartly Mm -hmm. for climate change, for health, for just the public space to be nice, the quality to improve. So New York City, come on, you can do it. <laughs> Edinburgh, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, all those cities want to also say, wow, this the strong voice is coming from Kampala. Mm -hmm. We must do it. We and can do this. Yes, we can do it. We can do this. So it's about safety. It's about, it's about everywhere. Now in Africa, mm -hmm. the image of the bicycle is uniform. Mm -hmm. so this psychologic film is supposed to speak to the leaders you know in Africa you don't need an engineer to speak for bicycle transport you need the president because it's very difficult Yes. so that's why psychologic is very powerful to us and uh, F for now, we cannot allow to put it online. Everybody would watch it, mm -hmm. but it's still screening. It's uh, scheduled for many, many uh, festivals, so mm -hmm. it's still uh, okay. It's still protected, showing. yeah. Okay. Otherwise, people will be able to watch it we, later. We will look for it. Once yeah, it's available. Yeah, once it's available, it will be here, and maybe someone here will be interested and look for it and organize, and people can pay tickets to go watch Psychologic. That means you must think with a bicycle mm -hmm. how you can live better in your city mm -hmm. liberate yourself it has nothing to do with gender nothing to do with your wallet or poverty it's just about infrastructure freedom mm -hmm. saving uh, money mm -hmm. saving time and living your life Amanda, thank you so much <laughs> for coming through. <laughs> thank you for sharing your story. You're welcome. Thanks uh, for inviting me. I that hope means you'll allow me back on the bicycle. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I used to ride bikes all the time. Can you try to sit on the bicycle later? Yes, I'm going to get you, on it. Once you ride, you can never forget how to ride. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> it's even our president remembered how to ride recently. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to wrap up. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Yeah. I've been chatting with Amanda and Gabirano. She's been talking about this campaign she's been running for six years to encourage people not only to ride bicycles, but also to walk, to be healthy, and to be mindful of our environment. Just last thing, what's yeah. your advice to young people who are trying to figure out this thing called life? 
life any last words they have to be they have to be honest mm. they have to be hard working they have to be consistent mm. and they must make the right friends right friends the right friends you would rather have one friend but a useful one mm -hmm. then of course above all they have to be prayerful and very positive mm. a, a negative mind will never allow you to put your head up mm -hmm. so they have to face all challenges very positively and uh, surround themselves with uh, the right positive people. people and those looking for love you don't have to look for love you will feel the love and then you will have met love <laughs> <laughs> well amanda <laughs> ha, speaking of love your last <laughs> song your last song that is very special my to you. last song mm. is the power of love it's so it's also about uh, the bicycle how i love it i cannot just enjoy it myself but it's also about what love can do what we go through but love will always win mm. it stands it should win mm -hmm. if it doesn't win then that means someone got it wrong okay. so the power of love by celine has always been my powerful song i cannot forget it okay yeah here it is thanks again for coming you're through. welcome crystal <laughs> the power of love celine yep. dion